Hi, I'm Pete Warden, and I want to show you how you can use Google's free Colab service to compile programs for the Raspberry Pi Pico uh, completely from the web browser without having to install any software. Uh, I find this really useful for uh, students I work with uh, because they often have all sorts of different laptops um, and I don't want them to have to spend a lot of time figuring out, oh, how do I get this installed for my Windows? How do I get this installed for my Mac OS? Or how do I get this installed for my Chromebook computer? Um, so using Google's browser-based Colab environment is a nice way uh, to get them started uh, very quickly uh, without having to go through any software installation steps. Um, so uh, to do this tutorial, um, you will need to have a Raspberry Pi Pico board um, and a USB uh, micro connector for that board. Um, so uh, I'm going to assume you already have those, but that is all the equipment that you should need. Um, and if you look in the description of this video, you'll see a link to a Colab notebook. Um, and if you take that link uh, and open it up in your browser, um, you should see a page that says building blink for the Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, and uh, if you've opened up that page, congratulations, that's the first step. Um, you'll, what you'll see is uh, some documentation uh, talking about what you're actually going to be doing. Um, but what's special about this web page is it's a mixture of documentation and code. And the code you can actually run straight from the browser. Um, and you can see some more detailed instruction here in this first section. Um, but to show you what you do um, to actually run the code, I will scroll down. Um, it describes here that we need to first install a software development kit um, that we use to build programs for the Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, and you might be wondering, oh, where is this installed? I thought this was all on the web browser. Well, the magic of Google Colab is it actually, in the background, creates a virtual machine on the cloud that's completely free, um, that's temporary, uh, to run all of the commands that you put in. So if you scroll down and you see this box here, um, it has code commands. And when I move the mouse over it, you'll see a little play button. Uh, that's called uh, running the cell. Um, you can also invoke the same action by getting a cursor in the uh, cell that contains this code and pressing the shift key and enter or return. But first, uh, I'm just going to click the play button uh, to show you what it does. Uh, you'll get this warning. Um, this is just um, a, a general security warning um, and uh, just asking you to make sure that you trust the source of this collab. Um, you should uh, uh, not worry too much about this for this script, um, but uh, it's uh, something that uh, Google likes to make sure that you're careful of. So if you click Run Anyway, what you'll first see is up in the top, it says Connecting, then Initializing, and then Connected. Um, and then you'll start to see Output appearing below the cell that you've just run. This is the output of the commands that you've just run uh, in the Linux virtual machine that's actually spun up in the background on the cloud. So what this did here was it ran these commands, which are from the getting started guide uh, from uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation for the Pico, uh, which is linked to from the notebook. Uh, it describes these commands as the way to get the software development kit and uh, the repository containing the examples. So you can see the output. Uh, you don't see any errors. 
it's done all the cloning. Um, and one of the important things that isn't so obvious when you get started here is to see the files on your virtual machine that's been created in the background, you need to move over and click this file button on the left sidebar. So if you click here, you'll now see, oh, okay, there's a Pico folder that we've created. And if you click that open, you'll see we've got Pico examples and we've got Pico SDK. And as we're running further commands, these often put outputs into the file system. And you will need to remember to go to this sidebar to actually um, browse the file system on the virtual machine that's been spun up in the cloud um, and then use it uh, to uh, access them. So we've done that first step of installing the SDK. Now we need to install the right compilers and libraries that the Pico compilation process is going to need. So just like before, uh, we could press the play button, but here I'm actually going to press shift return just to show that it does exactly the same thing. And you'll see that it's putting some output there. While something's running, you'll actually see that uh, spinning icon there. If you need to cancel something, um, you can by clicking on that. But for this, we'll just let it run. Um, it will take a few seconds. Um, but once this is done, you'll actually have all the tools that you need on your machine or on the virtual machine that's uh, running this Colab notebook. And if you're wondering if it's still running, you can scroll up and just check the uh, spinning progress bar there. And you can see there it just completed. So the next step that we're going to do is go into the examples folder and set up the build files. Um, this is uh, just a preliminary step that we need to do before we can actually compile everything we need. So I'm just going to run the next cell and you'll see it's uh, doing some configuring and then uh, the build files have actually been created. And now finally uh, we're actually going to build the blink example and what this does is there's an LED on the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico um, and this is going to set it so that it actually uh, blinks on and off. Um, and it should be pretty quick because it's a pretty simple um, file. Um, and if you're interested, you can actually go into the file system and choose Blink and double click on Blink.c to actually see it on the side here. So you can see it's just a simple loop that's saying, hey, I'm going to turn the LED on for a quarter of a second and then wait for a quarter second and then turn the LED off. Um, now, one thing to watch out for if you're using these uh, collabs is there's a temporary virtual machine, a temporary Linux machine that's spun up in the background to, <clears throat> to run this stuff. So that means if you leave this uh, web window, or if you leave it too long um, and you don't interact with it, that machine will be shut down. And if you made any changes to this file, um, those changes would be lost. Uh, so it's just one uh, gotcha to watch out for with using Colab is any changes you make to this file system here, you have to, for example, you could choose to download this if you'd made any changes and then you'd have it on your local machine. So I'm going to close blink.c and let's uh, build this. You'll see it's doing some building. It's all running pretty fast and then it's built. So the following steps, um, you're actually going to need the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico um, and the uh, USB uh, to um, uh, micro cable that fits into the Raspberry Pi Pico. 
um, and you're going to need a USB socket on your uh, laptop uh, to plug this into. Um, so uh, the first thing you do uh, is you take the uh, small end um, and you have to, the micro connector is um, only fits in one way. So you sort of have to make sure that you get the uh, it the right way up. Um, and then it should go in fairly easily without too much force. And now the next thing to really uh, watch is there's a white button um, on the board. And this is called the boot cell button uh, for boot select. And what we're going to do is before we plug in the board, we're actually going to press down that button. Um, and then as we hold it down plug it in to the usb port on the computer so we see a notification down here um we're going to choose uh and it will depend on the operating system but you should it should be exactly as if you plugged in a usb uh drive or usb storage stick uh, we're going to choose open folder to view files and you'll see um, there's not much uh, visible here, um, but uh, this is the way that we're actually going to upload the file that we just built onto the device. And you'll see the Raspberry Pi Pico, um, it hasn't got any lights blinking right now, but with this executable, we're actually going to uh, get those lights blinking. So you have to find where the executable is in the uh, Colab virtual machines list of files in its file system. So I've got a screenshot in the Colab script. Um, if you go to uh, Pico and then Pico examples and then build, not blink, but build because the generated files are put here and then uh, go down to blink you should see blink.uf2. And that is the file that you can drag over to the drive that you've just mounted to load it onto the Raspberry Pi Pico. So I'm gonna choose uh, download to download it. You'll see that it appears in the browser. Uh, it's a very small file, so it doesn't take long to download. And then I'm just gonna drag it you can drag it from your downloads folder in the file manager. I'm just going to drag it directly from the bar in Chrome, drag it on to that Raspberry Pi uh, drive that appeared. And once it's copied, the drive should disappear. Um, and if you can see there, uh, you should see a light that's blinking twice a second. And if you've got that far, congratulations, you've just built and run your first Raspberry Pi Pico program, all without having to do any software install. The uh, Colab includes some uh, suggestions on making further progress. Uh, for example, building something uh, that you can use to actually give debug output back to your computer. Um, unfortunately, getting any debug logs out of the little Raspberry Pi Pico does mean installing some software on your computer. Uh, so that's outside the scope of this tutorial. But I'm hoping that uh, this quick guide um, has got you up and running with the awesome Raspberry Pi Pico um, and that you have a lot of fun with it. Uh, thank you for listening. I hope this is helpful. And uh, feel free to leave any questions uh, or comments in the uh, YouTube comments. Thanks, everyone.